In this episode, we prepare for Hurricane Dorian. We consider our options for weathering the storm and adjust our strategy when she finally arrives. This is our first time weathering a hurricane while aboard, and while we endured some tense times, the experience is a reminder that when dealing with Mother Nature, one can never be too prepared. So we've been very carefully watching Hurricane Dorian. Um, it's, it's just wreaking havoc in the Bahamas. We feel terrible for them. If you look at the uh, latest graphics from the National Hurricane Center, you could actually see that Dorian is uh, making sort of a beeline to the northeast towards us now. We are currently here in Lake Bradour, uh, the eastern tip of Nova Scotia. We're actually, we're really lucky. Uh, the lakes are very protected. So in general, we're in a good situation. We are up here in, we're now in Bedeck, um, which if you zoom out a little bit, you can see it's sort of northern part of the lakes. And we found some nice coves here. So you can see the protection here is pretty close to 360 in some of these spots. We're expecting winds to come from the northeast, north, and northwest. Um, and these locations definitely afford some good protection. Before we head to the cove where we'll weather the hurricane, we're going to fill up on fuel in the event the storm causes trouble here in Bedak, the only close spot we can get fuel in the part of the lake that we're in. We're filling up uh, for diesel and gas today, and we have priced out the gas at the marina versus the gas at the local ESSO station in Bedak, and we will save the price of a case of beer on diesel alone, $60 for a 36 pack? Yeah, it's a 30 cents per liter difference between the marine fuel depot and the regular gas station, so. Right. We're not taking that much fuel because our boat doesn't hold that much fuel, so we figure walk the five cans across the street. <laughs> We're money poor, but time rich. <laughs> yeah. As they say about sailors, right? I'm excited for this, babe? No, I love diesel. <laughs> Try to go to the very far tip of this cove. The charts are not marked for depth up there, so I'm gonna take the handheld depth sounder um, and race over in our dinghy, and Grace is just gonna follow me in. Grace is driving Calico Skies, and I'm doing a little recon. What do you got for depth there, honey? Fifteen? Okay. Ooh, this, is a little, this will be a little closer for us. Oh good. Just get the boat closer and I'll stick by you a little bit. Okay. I mean I feel like I'm in the middle of this 
but I, I'd feel more comfortable if you checked. 2.6 in the bottom pretty clearly. Yeah, you're right, you can see the bottom. I mean, if we got in there, we would be protected from any wind direction. Now that we're inside the cove, we are considering moving further in to a smaller inner cove. Bill's checking to see whether there's enough depth for us to make it inside. So I think there's about five feet of water back in there. I think you could just possibly sneak over the grass edge. Very protected spot. Okay. I guess Bill? just guide me in. Yeah, I'm gonna guide you in, follow me. Okay. One six. We're still moving. Port. I'm in. Uh, I'm in one three now. A couple more inches on our keel, and we wouldn't have been able to do this, eh? Yeah, we're it's like pretty tight. But it's really protected in here. This is so crazy. So this is in front of us. This is behind us. We went through this really narrow bit to come into this. It's probably not too, too often that there are boats that are our size that can make it into this little cove. So I don't think it's going to pick up on film, but there's chipmunks and a lot of activity going on in the woods right around us. I don't think these animals are used to um, having boats in this space. I got myself right in here. What do you think, Big Bear? We, we can't do 200 feet of chain in here, though. Yeah. We can't do all our chain, though. I don't know like, if it's better to be like really protected and less chain, or... How deep is it? Five feet. We're in like five four feet. feet. Or no, five feet overall. So today we're going to start the process of stripping the canvas off the boat. Um, we're going to keep our dodger up, just because it helps stop the rain from coming in the boat. We're going to get rid of the bimini, take the solar panels off. Solar panel number one is coming off. Hard to do when it gets too windy, so I'd rather do it before him. You don't want to bend these things too much, Slam being so careful. Yeah, delicate. Oh, I have a good breezy every time I try to do this. <laughs> Lash down our sail cover to reduce windage. Um, I don't really want to take off the full sail, um, but I think if I get it smaller and snugger, it won't grab as much. Why don't we want to take off full sail? Besides the obvious reasons. <laughs> Work. But it's also, isn't like, it good to have one in case of emergency? That's what I was thinking, yeah. If we needed, suppose we needed to heel the boat over or something if we ran aground or yeah. we needed to sail out of here. The jib is likely to open up the top, and then you have a real, real handful. The jib opens up while it's blowing tropical storm force. So we just got the jib down and packed up and we have secured our mainsail and Bill is now just taking down flags. We have a couple flags uh, that we're going to bring down for the storm so we're getting there with the deck. Quite a change in the weather overnight, huh? Yeah. It is the morning of Dorian. Um, she is still few hours away. It's only 8.30 and I think she comes through this afternoon. So she's six or seven hours away still. The eye that is. Our paddle board is deflated and it's now going to live under our salon table. And surfboard we just put <laughs> over here for now. We're probably not going to be getting into bed in the next 
12 hours or so anyway because we're going to be watching this freaking dirt right. Dorian come through so I thought that was a good place to put it um, and you guys can probably hear the generator or a noise in the background and that is our generator um, we're just trying to power up yeah we also I'm thinking about making water to be full of water um, last time a big rain came through here there's a lot of debris in the waterway from the forest um, so it might make sense to have all our water tanks filled up until um, we have the storm clears up and the water clears up. I was trying to think about the positioning of our second anchor. Yeah. I guess now that we've smoked out of the east here, maybe they can place it just off the side here. Our primary anchor is there. See the bottle floating? You might notice that we're no longer anchored in the smaller inner cove. After much deliberation, we decided to move out to the larger outer cove. The factors we considered when making this decision were one, that the inner cove was not large enough to let out all 200 feet of our anchor chain. The latest weather forecast put Dorian as a category one in Nova Scotia's capital city, Halifax, approximately 145 miles west of our location. This level of strength to us was not quite strong enough to warrant spider webbing to a closely surrounding tree line like the inner cove is well suited to. We felt that the risk of anchor drag instead was higher than the potential risk of major damage from windage. Second, in the event the storm caused water levels of the lake to fluctuate, we felt given the extremely shallow depth of the entrance to and interior of the inner cove, we risked getting ourselves stuck, which felt like an unnecessary risk given the strength rating for Dorian. So I'm just debating what to do with the second anchor. Part of me is thinking maybe I should just leave it on the boat now. Yeah. Um, it, it seems like the wind's going to be clocking quite a bit. Um, and yeah, the track, I guess the track, it seems like it's wobbled a little even more from yesterday. So um, it was looking much more like a southerly event. And it actually seems like it's more of a clocking event across the anchorage. So that's our anchor. Um, that's where we are. So the winds are right now coming from here, blowing like this. Their forecast to wiggle up like that, slightly out of the east northeast, and then swing around south and eventually southwest. So for sake of second anchor placement, I just don't know if I have a good option. I could put it here somewhere, but when we when we fully swing out to the south, we're going to be somewhere back here. So just all that rotation, I don't want to wrap the road around our primary chain. So I'm thinking maybe just keep the anchor and chain aboard, or maybe I'll flake it in the dinghy nicely if the anchor is there. Um, and then we can just throw the anchor in if we need to. So after talking to my buddy Brian, now I'm looking for trees to tie off to. Uh, I can't make up my mind, I hate this part. I'm scouting out. That one there looks pretty big, pretty close to the shore. Check out the root system on it. Pretty big tree. So um, I just looked at the uh, Windy app again and I think the full reality of the fact that Dorian is 
heading straight for us is setting in today in a whole new way for me now that it's the day of and I think it's just going to be a really tense and nervous day all around for both of us. Um, I feel really good about the preparations we've made so I think at this point it's just a matter of um, hoping for the best. COVID's looking good in there. Got in there. Yeah, it's also looking very bald though. Very what? Like the brown. Yeah, I know. Makes I don't know if we can get ourselves back out of there. Damn, we need that. We need that southerly shift, you know? I don't like how close are the shore here. So we're supposed to be moving around, right? We want to go be going that way, yeah. Um, our shoreline is going that way, which does nothing for us if we go that way, right? So we really. Um, needed to shift more south to get comfortable because then we have plenty of space back there to go. Yeah. But here we're kind of close to that shoreline. Incredibly, Dorian's still pretty far from us, with the eye a whole nine hours away from passing over our location. The wind is already blowing over 20 knots steadily, and the anchorage has become full of choppy waves. So, as you can see, the wind is actually clocked northeast, um, which is at heading 049. Yeah, so I'm a little concerned about this lee shore we're on right now. Um, it's about 100, what was that, 0 0.05 nautical miles, 0.03. I may set a stern anchor if it looks like we're getting too close to shore until the wind shifts out of the south. We have everything set to be, off, to be going towards this shoreline, that's why I have all the distance back here. And we have shorelines here and anchor here. Um, but it seems like the track has shifted just a little bit since this morning when we set everything up. Oh. First anchor dried, so Bill heads out again this time with a larger anchor. We swapped uh, for our bigger spare Danforth that we carry on board. Um, it seems like the little one dragged. I thought maybe it's a vice, sideways load, not a dead pull, but it seems like, I guess, 40 knots trying to blow us in one direction is too much load for that anchor. Because the wind didn't shift south as anticipated, we are blowing towards the lee shore, which is why we've set a stern anchor. <laughs> What do you see out there, honey? I'm just looking at the, the tr tall tree that's been snapped. Um, the boat just moved, so you're not going to be able to see it. Oh, I see it right there. Making my chili. It's now about 7 o'clock, and things are kind of still the same. This wind is just taking forever to clock around, so we're moving around a lot. Um, yep. It's been going between 27 and 40. 
We really want to see it go to the true wind direction, go to like 90 though, because then we'd be nice and protected. I have my pot holders on right here, exhibit A, exhibit B. And that should hold everything in place while we work on this chili. You need a gimbal open? Right. So there's a gust of 44 there. The gimbal is the uh, device that allows us to move um, so that as the boat is rocking, the stove can move back and forward in motion. It is 8.30 and the wind has finally clocked around. I've made a pot of chili and we're gonna sit down and eat it and try to pretend like it's a normal evening for a few minutes. Yeah, um, a crazy day. But we definitely have many more hours of the storm left to deal with, so it's not over yet, but it's gonna be a nice break. I am going to go take a look at my shoreline uh, now that we're kind of swung a little bit. I don't know how good that was, it's kind of dark. I brought up our stern anchor, got that out of the way. As we're swinging over it, I don't want to get fouled with the boat. Um, I also eased our shoreline a little bit because it's starting to take tension, but I could not get a bearing on where I was. It's so dark outside, so I just fired up the radar. Um, this was the leaf shore we were worried about right here. Um, it's now almost 0.05 nautical miles, so it's a few hundred feet away now. So you can see the wind is distinctly started to clock south. Like our heading is now 150, and we're starting to blow backwards to where we want it to be. So that's good news. Oh, the air is distinctly humid now. I'm starting to sweat. <laughs> I was just on the bow in the shorts and a t-shirt, changing the lines. No foul weather gear, a little mist. It feels like uh, you can feel a tropical air mass come up and over it's us. It's so freaky being in Canada. Like it's weird because we started the day in the upper 40s, and now it's like I feel distinctly warm. Like the cabin is, the cabin's gone up to over 70 degrees, and humidity is 76. So you can feel that tropical air mass come over us. Yeah, that's crazy. Checking the weather as usual. See if any updates. Oh, the eye is now. Oh. Our eye is to our west. Hmm. Which is about 10 o'clock now? Yeah, that's about right, right? Because that's yeah. where. Yeah, uh, no, it's actually passing through you, so it's. I think it's like between us and Halifax, yeah, I might go to the center of Nova Scotia. What are you thinking? Um, I was trying to figure out how often I should get up tonight to adjust our lines. Um, we got the stern anchor up, so we don't have that anymore, because we're now pointing away from the shore, which is good. Um, but we're still forecasted to shift through another 40 degrees. So I'm trying to figure out, um, I, I don't want to be hanging off the tree line, the, the shore line that I ran to a tree. So I want to keep that just as a safety, and I don't want it to get too loose where it can wrap around a chain and get confused and tangled. So I think I'm going to get up every now and then and uh, check the line and make sure it just, you know, has a little snugness to it, but not taking the main brunt of pressure. Now that the eye is close to us, we've started to see strong gusts of wind in the 50 knot plus range. Did we get how big that gust was? No, but it knocked the anchor off the deck. Yeah. That was loud, loud. Big heel. So, I blew out my candle because we just get these really crazy gusts and that has, like earlier in the day, it wasn't like that. It was very consistent. It was very consistent, yeah. Ain't nobody sleeping tonight. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's about half an hour so far tonight. It's now, it's now three o'clock in the morning. These guys are insane. Yeah, it's hard to sleep through them. Good morning. Good <laughs> morning. That was a long evening. Yeah. But uh the boat looks good and looks like we made it through. It's still a little windy and formidable out there, but uh, nothing like it was earlier today. Yeah, there's some serious gray skies going on out here, and it's also really cold. Yeah. Like, we woke up to the cabin, it was 57 degrees in here. Yeah. 
I only fell asleep for like two hours too, but at that time it just dropped. Yeah. I guess the system cleared out. So crazy, because at a certain point last night, like I think right after the eye kind of passed over, went by us, it got really warm. Like they, there was like warm, a very strong warm air that was like wafting around. It was really weird, um, but I guess now that's, that's over. Yeah. So I just went through and retrieved all our different lines, um, shore lines back on back. This one looks like the aftermath of the uh, fight we had last night with Mother Nature. But uh, yeah, a lot of kind of mess to put away. But I'm glad it all air dried. So we'll let them dry on deck overnight and tomorrow's gonna be sunny and almost 70 degrees, so yeah. So we're gonna let stuff all dry out and put it all away for the next battle. <laughs> If you like our videos and you want to see us keep making more videos, why don't you go check out our Patreon site? We have many tiers and they go as low as $2 a month. And as always, you could cap your monthly charges, you don't have to get charged per creation. We'd be so grateful. Um, any support we could get, we would be very excited about and we'd love to have you guys aboard. So we're going to put the link to the video here. Go take a look and we'll see you next time. Cheers. Cheers.